The Australian government is going to blow $253 million of taxpayers' money to mislead Australians on the Orwellian named Voice Referendum. It's a political stunt which seeks to cleave and split Australia with the ultimate divide and conquer manoeuvre. Politicians and government never ever give anything away unless it adds to their power, prestige or the interests of their donors or corporate or ideological lobbyists who wish to mould Australia in their own image, values or vision. Nothing is free, ever. Always look for the catch. The Albanese voice bright idea should be called the Trojan voice for what it proposes to do. In short, it puts Australia's land and resources into conservatorship, just like Britney Spears' father did with his daughter's affairs. Britney lost all decision-making over her financial and contractual affairs. She lost her children and then her career. It was said to be for her own good because she couldn't be trusted to govern her own affairs. Now imagine that happening to a whole nation. The siren song of the voice is no different for every Australian, including the Aboriginal people and those of every other race, whether white, brown or yellow. The voice stands for Australians can't be trusted. The voice means constitutional changes, which creates new veto power over every major Australian public policy decision. A nanny state on steroids. The voice oligarchs will need to approve absolutely anything the Australian people wish to do, including where they live, how they live, freedom of movement and every aspect of land use and ownership as Australians increasingly get squeezed into urban gulags known as 15-minute cities, which you can't leave when you exceed your quota and where every road becomes a toll road overseen by AI cameras, a prison without bars. The voice is the Camp Rules Committee, whom you don't elect or control. Indeed, not being Aboriginal makes you persona non gratia, a non-person at worst and second-class citizen at best. Every new piece of new legislation will need approval by the voice bureaucrats. What's the point of an Australian government if the nation has a new class of nobles? You can bet the faces behind the throne won't be black faces. Whispering in the ear of the voice oligarchs will be the new, real rulers of Australia who will strip mine the nation, tax it into oblivion and make it off limits even for a Sunday drive and prescribe every aspect of Australian life. The new colonialist overseers will be invisible marauders hiding behind the voice command and control structures that render voting a pointless exercise. If your vote means little today, it will mean absolutely nothing under the voice, which has the ultimate oversight and veto over government and your elected representatives that are already bought, bribed, lobbied, or plain incompetent and loyal to party apparatchiks rather than their constituents who got them elected. As for the Aboriginal people, the voice is supposed to empower, compensate, and recognise. They won't be allowed anywhere near the king like power of the voice. They'll continue to languish in remote settlements or urban settings infused amongst the majority population like black pepper in a recipe, so it's there, but not seen or really tasted. They'll be invisible and inert, for God forbid they might think they actually have power over the rest of Australia. Aboriginals will get nothing from the voice except more government largesse for white administrators and white crypto Aboriginals working for corporations looting Australia, using the immense power of the voice. With it, corporate marauders will exercise immense power and control from the shadows without having to deal with former messy public accountability, regulations and oversight. Australians will come to resent the voice as a New Zealand-like treaty of Waitangi on steroids, creating division and a new privileged class. Ask the New Zealand Maori what their treaty got them. Nothing. The voice is a treaty by another name. Australian Aboriginals already have 10 federal members, which exceeds their representation in the wider Australian population. What we are talking with the voice is two or more votes for Aboriginals to give them a louder voice. Aboriginals can already vote enter higher education without barriers, and stand for parliament or public office. Aboriginals can do everything that a non-Aboriginal can do, and more under affirmative action and generous existing taxpayer-funded programs. The voice is not about restitution or recognition. It's woke social justice masquerading as a guilt trip by privileged grifters who don't struggle with mortgages or making ends meet. The Australian Constitution addressed the full integration of Aboriginals with the 1967 referendum that removed the last barrier to recognise Aboriginals as Australians instead of their in before, when they were considered part of the nation's flora and fauna. Politicians can't be trusted, seizing more power under the guise of hand-wringing guilt redemption. A splintered, atomised and ungovernable Australia only benefits those who already command and exert power. Under the voice, they'll further consolidate their power using Aboriginals as their clueless proxies. 
Aboriginals don't need pity or welfare. They need opportunity. That already exists in Australia in spades, with no barriers to Aboriginal people. Aboriginals can exploit the opportunities now. They don't need the odium perceived race favoritism the voice will bring them. The voice referendum is a Trojan horse to usher in a power grab. When it's put to the Australian people, vote with one voice. That voice is a firm no.